This is now Benny Gatron likes a stiffer hackamore. This that's the core of this one. I know it is. Benny also he likes well this is a seven inch nose. I was going seven and a half with Benny. But uh and he likes nerve buttons. Benny does not like a swell. Where Bobby Ingersoll does like a swell. Howdy folks and welcome to Live Equestrian. My name's Teddy. This is Scott. We're just a couple of friends from opposite sides of the Cascade Mountain Range in Oregon with the shared goal of becoming the best horseman we can be. We love bringing folks along, hoping to inspire them in their faith, family, relationships, and personal growth. Horsemanship's the tool we use to communicate. Amongst folks who share this passion, it's a universal language. Ride along with us and grab on to a little cowboy wisdom as we share stories and lessons from the arena to the campfire. Come on, let's celebrate this equestrian life. Looking at some cool antelope out here. Pretty beautiful piece of country. Well, if a person was to travel around to try and learn information about hackamores, no trip would be complete without a visit to the legendary hackamore braider, Bill Black. That's how Scott and I found ourselves in Plush, Oregon, where we had the chance to visit with Bill in his shop as he shared some of the wisdom that's made him one of the most sought-after hackamore braiders in the world. I'm going to show you this, the oh, awesome. least amount of wraps. I just pulled these reins up, just like this. You bet. You have to practice learning how to throw this half hitch, right? Throw that half hitch. That is the least amount of wraps you can put on a hackle right there. That knot ain't going to come through there. Yeah, yeah. I learned this from Sheila Varian. Watching her tie, it's pretty more common down there in a Royal Grande San Luis Obispo area. Yeah. Can I look close to that? Okay, I see just exactly what you did. Hold that up to the camera there, Ted. Yeah. You might have to retie that. Yeah. Okay, let me see if I can retie it. <laughs> So, we rain. Major off what you want for reins. Figure out how long I want my reins. About a about a wingspan there is what I tend to like. We call it brisada in the Mexican language. Brisada. <laughs> I feed that through the middle. I assume you want the knot closest to the heel knot. I do. Yep. Okay. And then we're gonna throw. Throw it the other way. Okay. Throw a half hitch off in the front. Over there, right over the and top. And to the left. That's it. Yep. Nah, yeah. Pretty yeah. simple. Yeah. That's the least amount of wraps you can put on. Is there a name for that style of tie that you know of? I just give Sheila Varian credit. That's who I've seen do it. We're going to call it that then. <laughs> Sheila I know. Now I can show you another one real quick. Okay. Um, do you think it's important to take down a hack? more every night before you put it away or uh, or would you leave a well McCarty I've been on? asked that question I do mm -hmm. but I'll let you answer it yourself when you go to bed at night do you take your shoes off <laughs> sometimes sometimes <laughs> right if you go to bed and sleep with your shoes on you're going to get up in the morning cranky <laughs> well, it's no different than a hackamore. If you leave it sure. on there in the morning, your hackamore is going to be cranky. Yeah, yeah. That's how I answer that question. Just like Bill Kane told me one time, 
like my hackmore long he said you need to shorten them up he said you can't make them too short they'll stretch damn sorry hackmore if it does stretch <laughs> but i knew what he meant yeah it's yeah, stuff like that that's that you hear if you can get out with people yeah i remember one time benny he bought a two rainbows elf teresa made it he's up there handing me the money for it and he hits me she does better work than you. <laughs> <laughs> and Tom Curtin, he sells a lot of her hackamores. Most, a lot of, most of them have Teresa. If Teresa just ties the nose knot, I will put her name on the heel knot. Mm. Okay. And that's how Tom sells them that way. He says, hell, she's, she's doing better work than him. <laughs> hey, Bill, how do you take care of a hackamore if you own one? J. Adcock Rawhide Cream is about the best there is right now. J. Adcock. Adcock, okay. I'm going to show you. I just took, put my knot up here. This is a Benny Catron one wrap. That's what he calls it. Benny Catron one wrap. Yeah, you got that little half, you don't count that half a wrap. He puts this wrap right in front. Benny would go through this outside loop. Okay. Dave Jones' book, Practical Western Training, shows go through both loops. Okay. And I, I go through both. I like, I don't know why. I kind of like it. Myself, personally, I just like it, and that's usually what I do. But I go through both. Oh, yeah. That but that is, but uh, anyway, this is the half wrap. Like I said, Benny would go through this one. I go through both. But this is what Benny calls one wrap. One wrap. Okay. And these shorter hackamores now. We, we, yeah. You're doing, we're all doing that a little bit. I've got old, old style, style hackamores that have wrap after wrap on them, and I've got newer ones where I'm lucky to get to. Yeah. And then, uh, well, I'll, just put, I'll put two wraps on this. If it's like these other ones, like the Bobby Ingersoll's and stuff. Yep. Bobby would, uh, that's exactly how I tie mine. He comes through like this. Okay. I'd still go through two loops. Okay. Mm. But he says uh, when you're going through this one, you can pull it down, pull it, yeah, pull it yeah. in a little bit. The other way, maybe you know what this is called. The other way I do it is just like this, but then come straight down through here. I've done that. And yeah. that way it uh, comes out through the center. Comes out through the bottom, yeah, and it's in the middle, and I just feel like that's balanced. Looks kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah. And that puts one that and a half wrap in front. Yeah. Yeah. In Dave Jones's book. And I add or subtract wraps if I need to, based on how the balance mm -hmm. feels to me. And I've done, I've done that. You can also come right here and then come back up. Okay. But that will, that'll uh, slip on you once in a while. Mm. Oh. Yeah, but you have your Mercari rope coming out the top. Sure. But it'll top but, and the back. But your rain, your rain might slip on you. Mm. Okay. Start slipping. Yeah, it doesn't have as much, much friction there. But yeah. But I have to. I tie a lot of ropes on hackamores, knowing they will never come off. <laughs> I, I, do, I, I know they're not coming off. But yeah. I make a habit of breaking mine down at night when I put them away, but I got some old beat up ones that I don't. They stay mounted up all the time. I don't take any of mine down. Yeah. No. Well, I take that. I know. I know people have different yeah. different thoughts on that, but yeah. it is interesting to hear, you know, that some of that folks have different opinions and different ideas. But I think some of it matters too. Maybe whether it's a twisted core versus a um, versus a braided core, because it seems like a twisted core, the body will kind of tend to. Well, I've been told that too. I think. No, like I said, I did drive a finishing nail through my core and to prevent for, that. Okay. Duff Severe did too. That's yeah. where I learned it. Mm. Um, these two bodies, there's three ring knots, and I'm wrapped around. All 32 strings went around those three knots. And back down, yeah. yeah. If they tie a Turk's head, now uh, Merle Lehman, he was an old braider out of Lakeview. If they tie, pull this up, and they tie a Turk's head, that's and he said this that was probably where it's going to twist okay and i i got to singing if i left my rope on there and my horse gets a drink i thought that 
But there, there's been some comments made on Facebook, and I thought, and they got to think about what I said. They said, I don't see how, I don't have enough wraps on there. I can't twist mine. It'd be harder than hell. There's a lot of guys say the way I tie my, my, I tie my ropes on, I couldn't twist it. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I think a lot more of it is if it's a Turk's head tied mm -hmm. under there, and it had the twist to start with. Yeah. So I know I'm not twisted right now, and I don't think I could get that big old long leather hackamore up there on the end. Yeah, that's my third hackamore. <laughs> it's pretty long, and uh, it's plumb wore out. There's a lot of things, but uh, Dirk, I I know he didn't take his McCarty rope off, but that, that ain't twisted. It's a Rietta core hackamore. Yeah, I learned a lot from that batch of hackamores. Mm -hmm. This down, Ortega would take tape and wrap it between these ridges. Now at one time, Shepherds, there's a company in Chicago, Illinois, that made rawhide pins for conveyor belts, hmm. which is this piece of rawhide to stick in there for the conveyor belts. Well, Severs found it, and they was in a severe shop one time, Shepherds was, and they seen the address on the box, they called them up. I guess there was a big billboard going into Chicago advertising these rawhide pins. Sure enough. So that's, but that's what Ortega I heard did, would put tape between these ridges. Now sometimes I'll sand them off or rasp them off, and that gives me a different feel, a little softer feel. This one here is twisted up. Well, it all depends where you get the hide. This was a cow, I know that. This probably was a bull. It's only a raw hole. It takes several strips of rawhide and twist it for a core. This is my definition. This is two three-quarter inch strips glued together and, ta and twisted. And this has not been sanded? No. Okay. And that glue would make them stiffer, probably. Well, don't hold them together. Hold Just them hold together. them together. Okay. Yeah. I used to sew it, so that would, uh, but I quit doing that. That weld wood contact seam is pretty good stuff. Hmm. Well, anyway, Tom Kerr, he would take a strip of rawhide, is what Bill Everett told me, fold it and hand stitch it. And uh, I did that. And I got these sewing machines. I don't hand stitch. So I tried to run it under that Tipman machine there. Well, I cannot hold this narrow strip under that foot. So I had to go wider. So I go three quarter inch and I cut this in half. Well, this is how this all got started. And this is a Hereford bull. Them Hereford bulls are nice. So I'd uh, sew up one side and down the other. I got that electric machine. I can just step on the gas pedal and just brrr, get to going. It's a lot better. This like this one here. It's got foot pedals. The exercise bike that one is. Wear you out. <laughs> Wear your legs out. Then you're on the crank and everything. But that that artisan. That's a good machine. But anyway, this is two strips. Now this is pretty stiff. Yeah. Yeah, that does get pretty doesn't it? Yeah. Well, this is now Benny Gatron likes a stiffer hackamore. This, that's the core of this one. I know it is. Benny also, he likes. Well, this is a seven-inch nose. I was going seven and a half with Benny, but uh, and he likes nerve buttons. Benny does not like a swell. Where Bobby Ingersoll does like a swell. Now this one, well I know this one's on two strips, but not near as stiff as this one. My God, it feels like it is. But it'd be narrower, which I don't have one here. Well, I do have some. Yeah. Hell, I got the regular stuff right here. There's the cores. Right here. Are those ready to braid on? As soon as I tape them. Okay. I put black tape on all my cores to keep them dry. Yeah. If you don't keep it dry, it'll become a dish rag eventually. Sure. Yeah. Keep some moisture out. Yeah. Boy, that but see, is uh, Bobby nice. Ingersoll. Did you feel he, this one? 
He likes a swelled nose. Uh -huh. He uh, feels it makes better contact of the nose. And uh, and no nerve buttons. No nerve buttons. Very seldom do I put nerve buttons on the end of a swelled nose. Very, very seldom. Hmm. Now I'm it. I got we got them here and I got them here, but I don't hear. Okay. Okay. Is this a little narrower nose button too? Seven inch. Seven inch. Okay. Same as this. This one's seven too. Most okay. of mine are sevens. Last vote likes six and a half. And he likes nerve buttons. But he feels this shorter nose, you got more leverage, you're going to break, with six and a half, you're going to break him at the pole. The longer the nose, the farther down the neck you break him. Mm, okay. How, where do you think that spot is where you almost never have to worry about getting your hanger in there? High? Is it seven and a half or seven? Well, when old Nick was around here, this six and a half never got in his eye. Okay. It all depends. Some of them horses got a bone up here behind the ear that the hanger fits right behind. Keeps it out of the eye. Okay. So, uh, it's like all three of us are different. Yeah. yeah. So it all depends. But, uh, but seven and a half, you're going to be right on the edge of it on most horses. Yeah. And have to put a tie back string or a throat latch or a brow band. Mm -hmm. now this we'll be sharing more of our time with Bill in our hands on Hackamore class set to release sometime in 2021. So if you like the kind of content we're putting out here on Live Equestrian, do us a favor and like, subscribe, and share the video with somebody who might appreciate it. Hey, hope you guys are doing well and we'll catch you on down the trail.